Peace, love, and blessings, beloved. It's yours, Mugi, aka the struggling YouTuber. And I'll tell you what, yeah? Um, that aka, this is how it came about. I'm not even going to lie to you. The channel is struggling. The channel is struggling for subscribers. The channel is struggling for uh, viewers, man. So I think it fits perfectly. Uh, and I am here to call upon you to please help me change my uh, predicament. Help me change my circumstances and uh, hopefully I can get, uh, you know, a better AKA, a better name, right? Uh, progressive YouTuber or, you know, um, promising YouTuber. Now, how you can do that is by subscribing to the channel. All right. Please like the videos. Um, also, share the video so that we increase uh, the viewership. All right, there. So, I am here in the village and I am going to bring you a vlog showing you how people live in the village, how they go about their life right here in the village, right? How they live how they eat, how they, um, uh, you know, basically day-to-day -day life. That's what you should look out for. That's what you should expect in this video. Um, uh, you know, I started off the video morning about how the channel is not growing, but uh, I have to give, I have to give uh, maximum respect though to you my returning subscribers, my returning viewers, right? <laughs> All right. I have to give, uh, you know, maximum uh, respect and thanks to the returning subscribers and the returning viewers, you who have been with me for uh, quite some time. And uh, please, will you please uh, comment in the, sec um, you know, leave a comment. Let me know when you started watching my channel. I want to, you know, I want to connect with my long-time supporters, my long-time long viewers. Let me know how long have you been watching Mogi's Corner? Uh, when did you first view the channel? What's the first video that you saw on the um, on this channel? All right, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, you know, I'll be very happy to you know go back and forth with you interact with you and uh, let's converse it all right uh, we like to do that right here on Mogi's corner so let us start off the vlog around we end the village so i arrived right here at my friend's homestead my friend joseph this is him homestead this is his homestead all right and uh, he has a heart and uh, he has, he lives here with his beautiful family. He has a motorcycle to, you know, to go about his day to day, you know, get by here to there. And then these are his very beautiful children. This is his homestead, right? He has some fruit trees. He has a mango tree. Uh, to provide shed and this is where we uh, you know we sat down to you know talk about some things chop it up uh, he has animals he has some goats and chickens as well and uh, you know this is basically his homestead and um, you know mr. Joseph uh, like uh, you're going to see in the vlog Mr. Joseph lives with his father. That right there is his father's house. And uh, when Mr. Joseph became a man, his father uh, gave him part, you know, of uh, some land on the side where he started his family. Uh, so, yeah, man.
you cannot live in the village and not grow some food. So this right here, these are beans. Uh -huh. And then dry, uh, you know, he's drying some cassava right there, you know, very, very quiet and very calm, you know, and then that is Mrs. Joseph in the kitchen right there cooking a wonderful meal that we are going to enjoy today. So we are in Buyende district and uh, some people, some people, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's some people who think that uh, there's, no, uh, there's no banana plantation in Buyende. So I am here to confirm to you that in fact there is uh, bananas in Guyende district. You see how big that banana is. And then, oh, I love turkeys. Mr. Joseph got, got some turkeys. I love turkeys, people. Uh -huh. So village life is... Uh, mostly about farming, living uh, a sustainable lifestyle, you know. You have your animals, you have your birds, you grow your food, and then if you can, yeah man, these are swine. And then if you can, uh, you know, uh, set up other income generating um, projects, that's nice. So you see Mr. Joseph got some, um, what's that? Ground nuts harvested, fresh, and uh, he's leaving them right there to dry. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Still showing you these village communities now. Such, um, mud houses we call them huts now these huts are very common houses in the village and since i told you on my channel i think uh, i've been saying it that here in africa we are, you know, a community, we live as a community. Now, let me, let me take you around and show, show you the other houses in this community. Yeah, man, showcasing the beauty of Uganda and village lifestyle, village, you know, village living. This is another hut that you are looking at. Now you may you may ask yourself why are they why are there so many houses? This is one household and you will find that uh, these huts belong to the sons. You know one of the houses there is a main house and the others are given to the sons when a when a boy grows and comes of age they are you know they are allocated a piece of land not far from the father's house to set up their hut or their house and then they can marry and then the community exists everybody does not live very far from their family. That's why normally you find that uh, there are several houses like this in one, you know, in the same area, in the same place. Again, this is another example of a typical village homestead. Now you're going to see multiple houses 
multiple homes okay and uh, you know I touched on on this already uh, the explanation why there are several detached huts or houses in this case uh, this is one household or homestead I should say now I told you already if it's not the owner or the father if it's not the father building multiple huts or houses for uh, his wives then the other possible explanation is that the father has given some of the land or you know has given authority to the boys of the home because that is uh, traditionally that's what happens uh, gives them uh, authority or permission to start their families on that land yeah man so it's pretty pretty interesting very very um, those traditions are still um, widely respected and kept you know living in a community doing things together you know what I'm saying uh-huh so here we have a church wow so people come here to pray this is their church just showing you how it looks like inside there you have it the pulpit Hmm. How do people get by in the villages where there is no public transportation, taxis and all of that? So I am here with uh, Mr. Joseph and we are on a boda boda, on a motorbike. So this is how we get by in the villages. You know, just you need to save up enough money and buy yourself a bike now that's that's the modern times but back in the day people used to walk for several kilometers just walking and then when they introduced us um, bikes uh, you know you know the cycle the, you know the pedal bikes and people used to go on um, bicycles all right but nowadays the bicycles are not uh, very popular because you know we need to do things a little bit faster and this and that we need to get by quicker so motorbikes are the main means of transportation in the villages now there are buses that transport people from the main cities into the villages and then but they don't come inside you know like where we are so it's motorbikes that we use still showing you how we live in the village so you can see the brother here uh, he's coming from the garden he just harvested some um, looks like cassava or some corn maybe some cassava and some corn and he's pushing it on his bicycle that's how we live family still showing you in this Ugandan village how people live the beautiful things and the nature so this is a school family and uh, look at the state of it you know my my assumption is that this is a private school and uh, that's the population of the school they are seated down learning communally yeah man so this is how we live and then 
right here we have a homestead right by the school now you know I was talking about uh, you know people living communally and hence why hence why you can see in this in a in, in in one household you have multiple huts uh, in the first uh, in the first clip I explained that you know since communal living is a big deal here in Africa uh, it's possible that uh, a father who has land when the son grows up, uh, the father gives the son a portion of the land on the side to set up a heart, right? But also, if that's not the case, to explain why there are multiple huts in the same uh, homestead, you know, here in Africa and in Uganda, um, Plural marriages, i.e. polygamous marriages, uh, that's our culture. So if it's not that the father has given a son uh, some of the land or a site to set up their houses, uh, then it's possible that the father or the man uh, has built an extra house or hut for other wives so you may find that uh, in this case we have one house that could be the main house and uh, that's the kitchen and then we have another house now i'm not saying that this is what is happening in this homestead don't get me wrong but to explain to you how we're living in africa this is how we live so this is food you know what this is this is cassava so they harvest it from the garden uh, cut it in pieces and dry it on the floor and then after it has dried properly they take it to the machine and pound it to flour and then make maize flour that is eaten so uh, going back to the point of uh, plural marriages so it's possible that a man has his land builds one hut builds one house and then for the for the first wife and then when he acquires the second wife he builds a second house or a second hut for for the second wife all right so just sharing this vlog about how we live here in africa especially in a village so look at that and uh, what we are seeing here is children learning under a tree. You can see them seated and uh, the blackboard right there. There is some work on the blackboard, probably notes given by the instructor or the teacher, but presently I can't see a teacher actively teaching. Now, this is not uh, this is not unusual in schools, especially in the villages. We are in a village in Buyende district. Wow. So this is, uh, in most cases, this is not due to, you know, the students or, or the learners or the teachers liking. It is mainly due to a lack of sufficient classroom houses that, uh, you know other learners end up not 
needing to learn. Under the tree. I am not sure if this is a private school or government school. This is called St. Jude Katogwe Primary School. And then on the other end as well, similarly, we can see a group of learners under the tree. The zoom on my camera is not, uh, you know, very powerful. It's not very good. But I can see the instructor. If you look very carefully, you can see there is an instructor. There is a teacher that is actively teaching that group of learners. Okay, so just as I am still here, the bell just rang. It's a half past 10 a.m. So having, you know, went to school, that is, a, you know, a bell to signal break time. And you can see The old women uh, who are carrying snacks in the buckets, they are going to sell. And then, okay, so somebody is ringing my phone. And then on this other end, the learners are going to play football. Hello. Blondie. Yes, sir. Let us see you are. See you are. Uh, Mama Jerry Wali. Hey, Mom Pekusim. Okay. Obviously, people need clean drinking water, and in the villages, it's boreholes where people come to, you know, get their clean drinking water. Boreholes like this. These are provided by non-profits, and uh, sometimes, or in many cases, I should say, uh, in partnership with the government. So the governments. If, if, if it's not the government, it's the non-profits that uh, construct boreholes like this one to make sure that to make sure that the people have clean drinking water. Now, it's not unusual that the water source is very distant from where the people live. So in that case, you can see a brother pushing two jerry cans of water on his bicycle that uh, you know the water source in that case is distant from where he lives yeah man i hope you're enjoying this vlog sharing with you how we live in the village or how people live in the village now this is also important now in the city it's a lot of noises cars trucks motorcycles people fighting and that but do you notice that here in the village it's a different kind of sound that's right bad singing i think it it sounds good doesn't it figure that very nice i like it so those trucks 
or those pickup trucks like the one I have uh, shown you, that's, uh, uh, I think, uh, it, it, well, it's, uh, it's labeled with MTN. MTN is a telecommunication uh, service provider. So, so for sure, that car has, uh, those are technicians. They are coming from, uh, you know, servicing a tower. And then these are the mini buses or taxis that bring people from the villages. You see, uh, then we have another, um, we have another pickup truck coming. I think these are, you know, farmers or other people working other projects. Family. Yeah, man, so still. Taking you on this vlog in the village. We are in Buyende district and Buyende district is um, uh, approximately 60 kilometers from Kamuli district. Well, where we are presently and uh, Kamuli district or Kamuli town is 60 kilometers from Jinja. All right. I hope you're, you're connecting the dots, giving you this information to help you do that. Uh, also, um, Jinja city is 80 kilometers from Kampala city. All right. Now I am on our highway. This is the freeway, this is the highway, this is the main road right here in the village and you can see it's very, very, very busy. Very busy with motorcycles, border borders. Now uh, there are also uh, mini buses, you know, you know the small buses, uh, we call them taxis, you know. They are also, they provide transportation services to, you know, the people. We the villagers, we the people who come to the villages, but mostly um, it's border borders, it's motorcycles that, uh, you know, bring people or transport people here in the villages. Now, this road right here, this is how it, you know, you see where the camera is pointing. So that is the road coming from uh, Kamuli, Kamuli town. And then as you proceed, as you continue in this direction, the road goes up to Vukungu landing site. Uh, Vukungu landing site is a fishing village, uh, still in Buyende district. But uh, this is, th that's where this highway ends. Uh, it's on a, uh, Bukungu, that uh, landing site is on the shores of Lake Choga. Family, now obviously you know that what brings me to the village is, um, you know, my agriculture projects that I run over here. And uh, the other thing as well is to view land and uh, bring you some videos, you know. Now, this is pretty interesting. See, we went all the way inside, all right, to view, to tour this land with uh, Mr. Joseph. And uh, it's very interesting that, you know, we left this bike by the roadside, unattended, nobody watching it. And uh, he didn't seem, any, you know, concerned at all about, uh, you know, thieves. So, what I can tell you about the village, most people who live in the village, they have big huts because most of them have, you know, almost everything they need to live yeah? and to live and be happy and contented with what they have. You know what I'm saying? They grow their food. They, most of them don't have bills. 
So, this brings me back to, uh, you know, the point I want to make is that theft, you know, theft in the village. Well, there are thieves, yes, it happens, but it's not a very common thing. It's not something that uh, you worry about. Now, for example, if, uh, if, we, if we was over there in Kamuli town or in Jinja city, man, you have to make sure that somebody is watching your motorbike. Otherwise, it could easily be stolen. So this talks to you, uh, you know, this talks to, I mean, the peace of mind you have in the village and, uh, you know, the, 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 the lifestyle in the village. Theft is not something that you worry about too much. Then also, you see, the highway is busy with, uh, you know, cyclers, bicycles. I think they are, they are either coming from the, from the market or they are, you know, cycling towards the market to go and sell whatever they are carrying on their uh, bicycles. So, um, I came to the village, obviously, to, you know, run a few errands. And uh, I found myself needing to stay for a night or two. I don't know, maybe tomorrow I'll be finished with whatever business that I came to do. But yeah, I just thought that uh, I should share the place that I am going to stay at for the night. Now, a lot of you may wonder if there are decent, decent places where you can stay in the village. So this is a village um, bed and breakfast. Well, take out the breakfast because that's not included. But, uh, you know, it's a pretty decent, um, you know, uh, lodge. That's my bed. Uh, obviously, everywhere in Uganda you go, you need a mosquito net. Uh, and then there you have it. You have to make sure that you are safe from... Uh, the mosquitoes and uh, okay you have some jerry cans of water right there in case of a water cart and this is the um, this is the toilet clean I'm very impressed by by that as well uh, you got a shower as well yeah man this is very very impressive um, Oh, it's uh, I hope that I will have an, a nice, you know, a nice stay at this bed without breakfast. <laughs> All right, people. So, uh, and uh, the other thing that is, you know, very, very impressive also is that it's uh, a very budget, um, you know, a budgetary, what, what do I call it? I paid very, very little money to stay at this place. Uh, only 15,000 Uganda shillings. 15,000 Uganda shillings. Imagine that. You know, less than five US dollars. Figure that. <laughs>